Welcome to Pirate Talk Radio. In this podcast, I discuss everything Sea of Thieves, from lore to PvP, to even what fish you can catch for the hunter's call. Please sit back, relax, and join me on this adventure. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Pirate Talk Radio. I want to apologize for not having an episode out for you last week. Uh, got some information as far as my job is concerned. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. Don't worry about it. I'm all, all fine. Uh, we're just starting to uh, get things ready uh, to go back to our offices. So there will be a commute for me and trying to organize uh, my different teams to try to get back to the offices kept me very, very, very busy. And so, quite honestly, and I apologize again, this isn't, uh, shouldn't be an excuse, but unfortunately, it has to be an excuse for me. I was extremely busy the last week, and, uh, and yeah, so, wasn't able to get an episode out. But, uh, some interesting news has hit Sea of Thieves, and um, uh, I also have a little bit of a spe- speculation um, uh, part on this. So, uh, what we'll start uh, with is the news. And some of the new uh, events or new things you can do in the Sea of Thieves starting this week, uh, honoring the Olympics. So, I've got some positive views and also some negative views on this. And I'm sure many of you who have been listening to this podcast for a while know what my negatives is. So, we'll save that for the end of this. And I don't want any nasty grams. I don't want any uh, bad fan mail on this. I know I've, I've have at least one review in the Apple reviews of this podcast that says I complain about this too much. Well, guess what? It is a problem and I'm going to keep complaining about it and talking about it until it becomes fixed because that is what I do because I absolutely love this game and I would like to see it, you know, reach higher and higher heights. And the only way to do that is to fix some of the issues that we have. Um, so let's talk about this. The Olympics uh, in Tokyo have uh, have just uh, gotten started, and uh, Sea of Thieves has taken this opportunity to introduce a new event for us. Now, um, in the Sea of Thieves uh, official podcast, uh, Sea of Thieves said that they're going to take an approach to these uh, time-limited events and world events uh, in a different way uh, starting in Season 3 and uh, Season 4, and we're going to see a new approach which should... Uh, liven up the system, as it were, or, or you know, take some of our complaints about reusing of uh, old content and redoing it so we don't feel that way uh, anymore. Unfortunately, yet again, they have failed, uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. So the Plunder Games has begun, and um, the Plunder Games has a variety of tasks that you can do what appears to be daily, um, I think. Um, I haven't really done any of them yet um quite frankly and i'll tell you why uh in a little bit is the plunder games really give me no reason aside from playing with friends to even log in um i'm kind of just playing whenever friends want me to play but the actual event in the past because of cosmetics or whatever has has pushed me to log in and and want to do the new event and and get the new cosmetics unfortunately this one it, it doesn't really do that. So you've got a variety of different things that you can accomplish from sitting on skeleton thrones to beating forts to um, whatever you may do with your time, lighting beacons if you want, and you get gold as the reward. Each time you complete one of the plunder game um, challenges, you will receive 9,999 gold. There's quite a few that you can do daily, so you can rack in, rake in the amount of money and gold that you want for whatever cosmetics you may want to buy. Now, this is a fantastic um, thing to put in the game with the Pirate's Life um, large-scale update that we just received and all the new players coming in. There's a lot of new players and a lot of cosmetics to buy, so this gives new players a huge ability to rake in a whole bunch of money take part in old content that has been around for a very long time for us veterans 
um, and make some money and buy some cool cosmetics and not have to run around in the basic sailor attire or the pirate legend attire or the kraken attire or the crab attire. I still don't understand why so many new players like the kraken and crab and ash and stuff. It's just, come on. So many good cosmetics in this game that you don't have to pay for with actual money. You just get it with gold and you're choosing to pick those, but to each their own. Uh, but this is a great feature for these new players um, to get some gold in their pocket and get some of those ship cosmetics. You know, if they want to work on pirate legend and get the dark adventurer stuff, or maybe it's the wh whatever cosmetics they want. They now have the ability to farm out some gold until our August 16th. So it's just under um, a month of this event and they'll be able to kind of check it out and get some gold and buy some of the cosmetics. Now, unfortunately for us veteran players, and you've heard it from me for a very long time, Rare needs to stop reusing rotten, stale, and disgusting leftovers. Um, when these events first came out, Skeletal Thrones, Beacons, Forts, Fleets, Flame Hearts, Ashen Winds, whatever it may be, there were achievements to do. There were accommodations to do. There was an event revolving around it for stuff to do. So just in the launch of that content, us players farmed it out and we got our tattoos and we got our weapon skins and our hats and our coats and our whatever it may be. We unlocked it through the event when it first launched. Then a few months later, we get another special event. Let's call it Festival of Giving. And we did it again. And a few months later, we get Summer Games Pirates are Fun. I don't know. I, I just made that up. And we had to do it again. And then we get the Order of Souls event. And we do it again. And we get the Gold Hoarders event. And we do it again. And we get the Merchant event. And we do it again. And then we get Seasons. And we're all excited because something new is coming. And we have Daily Deeds. And we do it again. And... Then we have Pirate's Life, and it's all brand new, and then we get Plunder Games, and we do it again. But the fact of the matter is, I've done events for Forts, and Fleets, and Flame Hearts, and Ashen Winds, and Skeletal Thrones, and Beacons, and killing number of skeletons with the Ashen Wind Skull, and setting ships on fire, and firing myself on a cannon, and landing on a deck, and we have this. We've had it, we've had it, we've had it, you've, repl you've repeated it, you've repeated it, you've repeated it. I'm tired of it. Players are tired of it. Quite frankly, I was on Twitter the other day, and I'm talking about players who actively defend Sea of Thieves and all the poor decisions that they have made, actively defend them and saying, oh, this is great for this reason, this is great for this reason. And these same players who love the game as much as I do, who just don't actively bitch about some of these stupid things, are now saying, are you serious? We have seasons, and these are D, these are trials in the seasons. We have the daily deeds. They are daily deeds already. We've done these events so many times, and we've had these accommodations and achievements so many times. Why are we doing it again? And not only that, if you put cosmetics behind it, I promise you those same people, and, and some of you may be listening right now, you would be defending it. I would be defending it. Why? Because there's unique and fun new cosmetics to get. Unfortunately, Sea of Thieves decided, hey, this time we're doing gold. You know what gold actually means in this game? Absolutely nothing. Gold is an infinite resource in this game that you can get as much as you can carry, as much as you want, whenever you want. Gold means nothing to players, right? It means something to new players because they don't have it and they don't understand that it's completely infinite in this game. And gold has zero value whatsoever in this game at this point, right? They brought out the Dark Adventure and everyone's like, holy crap, how many millions of gold do we have to farm to get this? And now they have the Dark Adventures and they really now have no appreciation for gold whatsoever. And I'm assuming at some point we're going to get the same thing for doubloons. But at the end of the day, giving someone something that they've done 500 times already and saying, oh, you get 10,000 gold, not even 10,000, one gold short of 10,000. I don't know why they didn't round it up. It kind of triggers my OCD. But 
it makes zero sense. It is zero. There, there is no creativity in this whatsoever. From a game who is very creative, they've proven time and time again that they can create some brilliant artwork. They can create amazing cinematics. They create an absolutely outstanding story that evolves over many, many years. And yet on their events, it's like it's a completely separate creative team that comes up with these events and they're literally as creative as this keyboard. Actually, this keyboard's more creative because it's a keyboard and a mouse pad. This is more creative than the events team at Sea of Thieves. This is more creative. Look, it's a, it's a keyboard and a mouse pad. Holy crap. I could go out into my, out, out, out in the street right now and probably find a pebble that's more creative than the team who is running the events at Sea of Thieves. Yes, it's the Olympics. Jump on it. Do something. That's fine. But don't cop out and give us the same stupid tasks that we have been doing for years, that you have daily deeds about, that you have trials in your season pass about. People are already doing season three. Those trials already exist. Why in the hell are you putting them in another event? And this event doesn't even have cosmetics. Now, they have tweeted that if you do some sort of media, either pictures like their Sea of Thieves screenshot contest, which I personally think is complete bullshit, because I have looked at all the, the, the winners of every single Sea of Thieves um, uh, contest for the screenshots, since I've started entering them and I look at the theme and I look at some of these pictures, I'm like, that picture has nothing to do with the theme. And then I go back and find the person's original tweet where they tweeted this picture and it has nothing to do with the theme, yet somehow they won. And it's supposed to be theme-based. So in my opinion, the Sea of Thieves screenshot contest is a complete bullshit waste of your time anyways. Though, I will say, some of the screenshots are beautiful. There is a theme. Stick to the theme. Make sure it matches the theme, not only beautiful. I've seen several people submit absolutely amazing screenshots to Sea of Thieves who are not chosen, and it's perfect for the theme. But they, 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 I, they must just throw all the pictures into a giant bowl and they get the dumbest animal that they can find and they dump some peanut butter in there and they say, go ahead, go to the peanut butter and pull out whatever picture they want. And this particular picture has a plant on it that's growing from the seafloor and the theme was burn the house down, but the plant in the water wins. And I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And that is the exact same thing that we're seeing here. They are putting stuff in the game for you to do that, quite frankly, most of the players could care less about. And they've already done it. They've already done it. In fact, they're doing it every single day for the season pass. So why even make an event out of it if you're only going to give people additional gold? Because as we've talked about, Gold is meaningless. If you think gold actually matters in Sea of Thieves, you are playing a completely different game because I promise you, you're probably relatively new or you've played for a while and you know you don't have as much playtime in as other people and there's still things you want to buy. So to you, gold is important. But once you get to a point like me who has literally purchased everything in the game, both in the Emporium, and from the vendors, there is literally nothing gold means. Every single update, I continue to get more gold. I buy whatever they release, and I still have more gold. Gold has absolutely no value and meaning in this game. Zero. It's an infinite resource. So to give me something that I already have infinite of is dumb. It is not creative, and it is pointless. There are so many different things you could have done to make this event fun. You could have created a new parkour thing. You could have created, oh, use your sword dash to dolphin dive. You could have done so many different things that were revolving around the Olympics than just to say, hey, go sit on a skeleton throne. Go light a beacon. 
Go burn three skeletons with the Ashen Wind Skull. There are so many things that you could have done and made something new, creative, and fun. And it's the Olympics. It's the freaking Olympics. Countries around the world. We've already been told so many times that Sea of Thieves exists in our world in a shroud of the the Caribbean. That still doesn't mean Belgium doesn't exist. The United States doesn't exist. England doesn't exist. All these places exist. Give us cosmetics that have like the American flag on it or the Belgian flag on it. Get some country like <clears throat> pride in there. Or if, you know, you can't do that maybe because of some legality or whatever. You have one of the greatest storytelling teams that I've ever seen in gaming. I'm pretty sure they can come up with something that is a country or series of countries like they did with the Gold Hoarders Order of Souls Merchant Alliance Reapers and make a cool flag for them. You could have made a uniform or an outfit that matches these different... Make it something cool with cosmetics. Don't give me some lame-ass gold from a reward of a task that I've already done five times in season three to max out the plunder pass. It's absolutely asinine. It is a disrespect to us as the players. It's absolutely bullshit that their creative team, who does all these other amazing things, cannot come up with something more interesting and more creative than, hey, let's do the same thing we've done the past five updates. It's absolutely asinine and absolutely ridiculous. I just can't fathom how they make this mistake time and time and time again. I said, when Pirate's Life comes out, the, 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 the number of players is going to skyrocket. It has. I said, the only way that this is, is good for the game is if they can keep players. What have we seen since Pirate's Life came out? Reusing the exact same stupid-ass achievement um, daily deeds, plunder pass, whatever it is, see it again. You see it again. And these new players, if I was a new player, wait a minute. I have a plunder pass with trials. I already did that. Why am I doing it again? That makes no sense. That's dumb. Oh, I'm sailing my ship and a megalodon spawns and the tail flips me into the air. Yeah, sure. It's a ha ha funny moment. That's that's really bad for your video game when the fact that a megalodon has been around in the ship or in the seas for years now and all of a sudden now the collision on the megalodon is sending ships sky like flying high in the sky and really far away. Yeah, it's funny. Guess what? It also makes your game and your developers look like freaking jokers that they would let that get through QA. You have to be able to capitalize on the players that you got with an absolutely beautiful and outstanding update in A Pirate's Life, and you're failing at it because, yet again, we're using old, stale, rotten leftovers, and we're trying to, here comes the airplane to these players. Players are not completely stupid. They know what you're doing, and now you've got new bugs and, and things you've introduced to the game because of poor QA where a megalodon's flipping your ship up in the air. You're going to go back to the same trends that you had prior to a pirate's life, which is players leaving because it's boring, because your creativity on your events suck, and your QA process, and your bugs and exploits. This is what I was saying a few episodes ago when we were talking about a pirate's life and how amazing bringing this in and how well it was done you're going to bring new players in. Now you got to keep them. And you're proving right now with this plunder games that you are not prepared to keep the players that you've got. You were cool with a big influx and now you're cool to see them go because you cannot get your game right. You cannot get your events right. You cannot get your QAing right. You promised us. You promised us 
in the Sea of Thieves official podcast that season three and season four would be better when it came to limited time events and world events. You said it. You all said you had amazing things coming for season three and season four revolving around events. When? Season three is almost over. Season three is in the back half of it. We're not going to get maybe but one more event in season three. Where's the new stuff you promised us there? Is it all in season four? I can promise you season four is probably going to have the same reused junky leftovers that we've seen every other season so far. And even before seasons, we're going to see the exact same thing. Prove me wrong. Yeah, we got a pirate's life, which was amazing, which is amazing. It's beautiful. If you haven't played through it, I played through them all to get all the accommodations. I had to do them all twice to get all the accommodations. It's an amazing experience. It's an amazing experience. If you can create something like that, you can create fun, creative, and new events that we haven't seen before. But this is just a long line of Sea of Thieves making extreme, amazing, and on the outside, promises that turn out just to be rotten food that you haven't thrown out and it should have been thrown out a while ago. So that's my take on the Plunder Games. There's no reason to log in. There is no reason in this event to log in. If you've got to finish up your emissaries, July is almost over. Make sure you're getting in there to finish up your emissary ledgers. Make sure you're getting in there and finishing up season three. But Plunder Games, it's just not it. It's just not it. Play the game because you enjoy playing the game. But it, it, if, if you're sitting there wondering, oh, I'm seeing this stuff on Twitter. Oh, I'm seeing this Plunder Games thing come up. I haven't had the time to log in. Trust me, you're not missing anything. You're, you're not missing nothing. There's zero things that you are missing by not logging into the Plunder Games. Sorry, Rare, if anyone's listening uh, from Rare. They're probably not. But if anyone is listening from Rare... You have literally given me a reason to not play your game until the next update. And that is not what events are supposed to do. Events are supposed to encourage players to continue to play your game until the next update. And you have literally dropped a turd in front of me and said, here you go. Here's your burrito from Chipotle. I hope you don't choke on the corn. I'm going to go over and get McDonald's. Okay. And I hate McDonald's. But you have literally given me no reason, aside from when my friends hit me up to play, you've given me zero reason to continue playing your game until the next update. Zero. Failure. Big old F on Plunder Game. Right. So there's your news and your update there. Now, I haven't done one of these in a while, and I haven't really dove into the lore uh, too much. But the next topic I want to hit, and you know what? I tweeted him because he got his video out before I did my episode on this. Captain Falcor's latest video just was a slap in my face. Thanks, Falcor. Because he he tweeted. I I don't even remember what he said back to me, but but it's a great video. Falcor is an amazing creator. If you're not following him on, on Twitch and on YouTube, Really short, uh, several videos a week, things on Sea of Thieves. He is the troll of all trolls, and he has some really good insight on not only the lore, but he's got some some really hilarious trolls that he does, and his streams are absolutely excellent. But he beat me to the punch! Because I said in my video, you can go back and watch them, in my videos, and I've talked about it with A Pirate's Life, the thing I was afraid of with Disney taking over was... All of a sudden, at the end, when like I was sitting here thinking, well, Davy Jones is your new villain, so when we beat him, what happens next? And I said what I was afraid of and what I was going to throw my computer out the window for is if we beat Davy Jones and then all of a sudden a ship flies down from the sky and this big old pirate with a hook and a red outfit says, bring me pizza pad. And that was my biggest fear. But quite frankly, my biggest fear may be coming true. May be coming true. 
And I have all my notes here. I have my notes here from my research in my Sea of Thieves book. Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean franchise is bigger than the movies. Pirates of the Caribbean is a book series. It's it's the movies. It's a very long, extended universe of information. And what we also have to understand is anything from Disney movies or, or books or whatever, a lot of times when you're dealing with a real world, right? Pirates of the Caribbean take place in a real world. There is a real England and France and Caribbean, right? And in the Pirates movies with the Brethren Court, you've got the pirate lords from pirate lords from all over the world convening in the Brethren Court. Now, I say the word pirate lord because we have a pirate lord of the Sea of Thieves. Pirate lords are the individual leaders of the different oceans around the world. So if, you're ta- if we're talking about Pirates of the Caribbean, the fourth Brethren Court, which is the one in the movie, where you had Elizabeth Swan, who was the pirate lord of the South China Sea. You had Jack Sparrow, who was the pirate lord of the Caribbean. You had all these pirate lords who were in charge of different places around the world. And they come together in the Brethren Court to elect a pirate king. Well, we know Sea of Thieves has a pirate lord. We know that. Ramsey. Okay. So what's really interesting is if you dive into the extended universe and the larger picture of Pirates of the Caribbean than just the Disney movies, and you start to look in the book, what you'll find is there are several brethren courts. The, you know, we had the first Brethren Court who who imprisoned Calypso with the help of Davy Jones, as Davy Jones <clears throat> was a pirate lord as part of the um, Brethren Court. He's not now, former. But there is a very interesting member of the Brethren Court, a former Brethren Court. And... He's known in the Pirates of the Caribbean world by two names. And we're going to start with the first name. He was Captain James the Mysterious. And why I want to start with that name is it's very important that we understand a little bit about his history before we dive into why it could be very telling about what we could see in the future of Sea of Thieves. So James the the Mysterious, Captain James the Mysterious. He was the captain of the Jolly Roger. Now, some of you are already putting some pieces together, but we're going to keep going for those of you who have not put things together. His weapons of choice were as a sword or cutlass and a iron hook. For those of you who are still not putting things together, we'll get there in a few moments and you'll go, oh, oh. So James the Mysterious was a notorious pirate and he had a bad temper. But what was most interesting and what gave him the name James the Mysterious is frequently throughout his life, he would disappear and no one would know where he went. He would just vanish basically off the face of the planet. People knew he would go here uh, to Portugal, or he would go to the Caribbean, or he would go over to the Indian Ocean. People knew where different captains were going at different times. But James was a little bit different than them, where he would just set sail and no one would hear from him again until he popped up years later. And so what's very interesting about that is it actually plays them into Disney in a broader scale, and it more so plays into Sea of Thieves for a broader scale. Captain James the Mysterious, when he returned from one of his hiatuses from the world, left with two hands and returned with one hand and an iron hook 
and then from then on was known as Captain James Hook or Captain Hook. Now, in the different stories that we've heard across the world, this place that James the Mysterious or James Hook was going to was Neverland, right? Peter Pan and Neverland. Where he would fight, you know, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys and everything like that. And now to talk about Falcor's video, I again strongly suggest you go out and talk to Falcor, was he was painting the picture that James Hook is the captain that is referred to in the tall tale from A Pirate's Life with the Dark Brethren, right? The Gold Hoarder is looking for the captain. We also know in the Sea of Thieves lore book that the captain is who kind of cursed Flameheart Jr. and he was involved in all that stuff. But we don't know who he is. We've never seen him. He's just been always referred to as the captain. Uh, there's speculation that maybe the cursed captain from the Sea of the Damned may be this captain person. But it's more interesting to think about that we've never seen this person in the Sea of Thieves. We've only heard rumors. And we get the biggest tell in the tall tale that the captain, once the Dark Brethren Court's mission is finished, that he is going to sail on the fastest tides to the Sea of Thieves, which means he's not currently in the Sea of Thieves. He's somewhere elsewhere. Now, Falcor in his video said that maybe the Sea of Thieves is, in fact, what is left of Neverland. And I could see with the Disney partnership, they could put those together. And in the ancients are like the lost boys and the original um, people of the, of the, you know, the Sea of Thieves. Because in, in Peter Pan and Disney, there were mermaids. Uh, there were Native Americans, you know, all that stuff. Well, now there's skeleton curses that have taken over. The land isn't exactly where it was anymore. But his thought or his, his talk, and again, I, based on the ending of his video, I'm pretty sure that was a troll, but it's actually a, a pretty good way of drawing things together if we know that Sea of Thieves and Disney has been working together um, for three years now. It's definitely another pirate story that they could bring in. But more so, just looking at the pirates of the Caribbean side, they don't have to go the Peter Pan route, right? They don't have to go the Peter Pan route. But in the pirates of the Caribbean lore, James the Mysterious, or Captain Hook, he would disappear from the world for years at a time before coming back. Maybe he would disappear from the outside world, go into the shroud, and he was in the Sea of Thieves. And that is, in fact, where James Hook was going when he would disappear. And now he's out of the Sea of Thieves, trying to reconquer the Sea of Thieves using this Dark Brethren, and he is now going to go into the Sea of Thieves again. Um, but it's very interesting that we, we can look at this in two different angles. One is the very heavy Disney angle with Peter Pan, but the other angle is, of course, the Pirates of the Caribbean, the more realistic approach um, of, of branching off and taking the Pirates of the Caribbean IP and broadening it from the movies and actually bringing in the books, right? And the books have a little bit more, um, a little bit more like real life connections, right? We've got, um, you, you've got anywhere from Gentleman Jack in the books, right? Um, you've got, um, uh, uh, Edward Teach, you've got, well, he was in the movies, right? That Blackbeard, um, you've got Jack's dad, um, the keeper of the code, um, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of different characters that they could bring in from these books and bring them into the Sea of Thieves, but what would be a better villain to bring in when you're attached with Disney than James Hook? who was part of the Pirates of the Caribbean side. Now, I wouldn't want them to go down the Peter Pan route, right? The whole concept in of, of that Sea of Thieves is actually the, the remnants of Neverland, right? Which still kind of makes sense because the Lost Boys kind of stole from the Pirates, et cetera, et cetera. But bringing the Neverland angle in, I don't think I would be very happy with that, though I am a Peter Pan fan. Uh, I, I wouldn't be too happy with that approach. 
But bringing James Hook in, I wouldn't be too mad about, especially if they brought him in uh, along the lines of James the Mysterious from the Pirates of the Caribbean books. And there's a bunch of other p- folks that they could bring in. Don Raphael, they could bring him in. Um, you know, Gentleman Jack. Um, obviously, you know, uh, all-time favorite, um, Hector Barbosa. He's kind of in the game now, but he's not there. You've got Mistress Ching, another member, another pirate lord. Um, Villanueva, you've got them. There are so many different pirate lords that they use in the Pirates of the Caribbean books. Um, and some of them actually can be linked to, to, to real life and things like that. Um, but the idea of Pirates of the Caribbean, the book series, is taking place in the golden age of piracy around the world. So being able to bring that into Sea of Thieves, which has been said to be many times taking place in the golden age of piracy, it's just hidden amongst the shroud, which is why we are in our own little uh, we are own in our in own little um, area. So it's an interesting approach, and there's definitely um, some different things um, that they could do with that. Um, there is a link between Captain Hook and Blackbeard. Captain Hook served on a Blackbeard ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, right? Um, so there's a lot of different connections um, in inside of, of the Sea of Thieves and now with Disney, the Pirates of the Caribbean. The connection from the very beginning before we even knew that Disney was involved um, were there, right? There was a lot of tip of the caps to now again we also can say that those tip of the caps were very much approved by disney because disney had been working with them for so many years hence why we have a frozen ship set and an aladdin ship set and a pinocchio ship set and a um blackbeard ship set that is exactly from the movies like we we know that though the tie-in was there that we speculated for so long that Pirates of the Caribbean from Disney would work well in Sea of Thieves. Well, that's because they were already working together and we just didn't know about it. Um, But looking at the next step in the Sea of Thieves world, Captain Hook would make a lot of sense here. Um, It would play into the books. It would play into Sea of Thieves. And personally, I think he would be a very good villain. Now, with that being said, I am very partial to... Uh, The actor who plays Hook from the movie Hook, not the Disney movie Peter Pan, but the actual non-Disney movie of Hook. That is by far the best Captain Hook that we've ever seen on screen. Now, we're not going to get that, but beside the point, that would be amazing. A Captain Hook ship set, right? The Jolly Roger, a very cool, very elaborate looking galleon. It would look great in Sea of Thieves. We already know that the Queen's Anne Revenge looks absolutely amazing. But that, to me, is what we should look on the horizon. The other piece that Captain Falcor brought up, which I thought was a, was something that I pinpointed and pointed at when I played through it, but Cal- Captain Falcor is a little more quicker than I am in getting some of this stuff out, but it is reminded multiple times that Jack Sparrow and this greatest treasure that pirate, the greatest pirate treasure ever, the little box with the gold in it or the golden, you know, embellishments on the outside that he made a promise to her. Now we don't know who her is. We didn't find any information about her out, but if we're talking about captain hook in a Disney sense, her could be Wendy. Her could be Tinkerbell. I mean, let's just look at the ending scene of you beating a pirate's life at the end of the big Davy Jones fight around the the spire. The Black Pearl is no longer a ghostly ship. It is a real ship from that has been brought up from the bottom. And as you leave the Black Pearl for the final time and they set sail off into the sunset, Jack opens the box and in typical Disney fashion, just like the opening scene with the Cinderella's castle, all of a sudden it looks like some sort of magical dust starts to cover the ship and turn it gold. And it sails into a golden portal and off into the sunset. 
could in fact that be pixie dust the same magical power used in the peter pan universe to make people fly again i don't really want sea of thieves to head toward the peter pan angle but like i've said many times there are certain things that I'm always leery about when Disney gets involved, and that is that they may have a direction that they want this creative team to go. And if that is, we've done Sea of Thieves and Pirates of the Caribbean, now it's time to do Sea of Thieves and Peter Pan. It's very possible, and they still play well together, and there's still the connection of James Hook and the Brethren Court, and the Dark Brethren Court could then be a connection into Sea of Thieves, and all wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, we are now in Peter Pan's Neverland. I hope that's not where we go, but it's definitely something to think about. Especially with the exit of the Black Pearl at the end of the uh, the Pirate's Life tale. <clears throat> I would like to see them bring more of the Pirates of the Caribbean Pirate's Life into the Sea of Thieves. Obviously, we have the Pirate's Life Tall Tale series. But why can't we have more things? Why can't we have, I don't know, a fight with Barbosa, Or maybe Barbosa shows up on an island and we've got something to do for him. There's so many things that they could be doing here that are creative and interesting. Um, uh, hell, we followed Duke around for how many months trying to figure out what the hell he was talking about? And it gave us a lot of things to search for and do. Though it wasn't a direct quest or a voyage or anything like that, it just gave us something to do and find out and learn more about it. What about finding Barbosa somewhere? That would be kind of interesting. But I really feel like this Pirate's Life update was absolutely amazing and it brought a lot of players coming in. But I fear that it is now stagnated. And though a lot of people are still enjoying it, a lot of people are still playing through it to get all the little clues and little little uh, references and things like that, I feel like we're not going to see a whole lot from the Pirates of the Caribbean folks for a while. And that kind of makes me sad, because I was really hoping that the Pirates of the Caribbean would come in and kind of push some of these storylines forward, and it really hasn't. Um, so now all that we can do is speculate on what's coming next. Is it going to be Sea of Thieves or is it going to be Disney? I still very much feel, playing through the Pirate's Life story multiple times, that it was very broken and it was still very segregated. We had a Sea of Thieves feel and we had a Pirates of the Caribbean Disney feel. They felt very disconnected to me. And though you can see the threads trying to connect, Overall, I felt it was very disconnected. So I think it's the game is at a crossroads right now. Obviously, we know the bugs and the exploits and the crappy reused events and the, the new bugs popping up. Obviously, there's the technical side that needs to be fixed. But on just the storytelling side, there needs to be more connection. There needs to be more unification between the two brands because the brands are clearly unified and and here to stay, hell, down at Disney Florida, I think, there was a giant billboard telling people to download and play Sea of Thieves, and they can play with Jack Sparrow and stuff like that. Clearly, the two brands are linked. For how long? I'm guessing forever at this point. I'm guessing this is a marriage that we're going to have forever. But what I want to know is what's coming next. We've got a lot of storylines that we haven't tied together yet. We've got the final introdu introduction to some stuff about Flameheart Jr., Finally, we've got some information about Wanda and now how she's turned her back on Flameheart. We've got more information on Duke and the Gold Hoarder and the Dark Brethren. We've got some more information that has pushed the story slightly forward, but now there's still a disconnect there between Disney and Sea of Thieves. And I want them to, sooner rather than later, start to at least weave that fabric. I don't care if we have answers right now. I just want to see the weaving of the fabric happen more. Obviously, Davy Jones is locked in the ferryman. Wanda's not. The Gold Hoarder's not. Duke's not. The Captain's not. 
Jack's gone, along with Rose and and uh and his crew and George, they're gone. Pendragon's still here, you know, the 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 crew of the Morning Star still here. The threads need to be woven woven together a little bit more for me. We still haven't had any answers about Flamer. We're still fighting his generals and his skeletons on the Fort of Fortune. We still have his shit talking face in the sky. That's a story that hasn't been tied up yet, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with it not being tied up. It's annoying. But now that we've introduced a pirate's life in this whole new series of of characters and story, I want to see some of these threads tied together so we can see a better connection between Sea of Thieves and Pirates of the Caribbean. And I want to know and start to speculate like we just did with Captain Mysterious, Captain James Hook. I want to start to see where we're going to go next. So my challenge to all of you listening or watching on the YouTube, in the comments or on Twitter or come on over to the Discord, drop me a line and tell me what you think will be the next step in the evolution of Sea of Thieves. Obviously, I don't want to hear things about bugs and exploits because we already know that's an issue. I want to hear what you think is coming next for the story. Where are we going? What are answers we're going to get? What are some new threads that we're going to see? What would you, knowing the lore of Pirates of the Caribbean, knowing Disney, where do you, the player, want the story to go next? So leave me a comment, tweet at me, whatever it may be. Let me know what you would like to see Sea of Thieves take this story and keep going. By the way, if you haven't done so already, make sure on Spotify, you're listening to the Athena's Fortune uh, audiobook. It's absolutely free to listen to. It's narrated wonderfully. I've been trying to listen to it when I've got some free time um, at work just to you know keep the, the audio going. And it's absolutely great. And it gives you a lot of lore, background, and story uh, to Sea of Thieves. And you can also pick up the book if you want to read it, the, the actual physical copy. You can pick that up on Amazon. You can also pick up the Sea of Thieves Flameheart Jr. journal on uh, on a- Amazon as well, which has a lot of great lore in it, and you can start to see some of the early concept uh, art and stuff like that for some of the things that we're seeing now um, in the game. So let me know. Where would you like to see the story go? Um, I, I, would, I would not be mad about bringing more of the real world in. I would not be mad at seeing Blackbeard come in in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I would not be mad about seeing Mistress Ching and some more of the like Asian-inspired piracy coming in. I would not be mad to see Captain Hook come in, so long as we're also not dealing with flying children and fairies. <laughs> like That's the part that I say leave at home, right? Like We don't need to turn this into Peter Pan the MMO. Let's uh let's keep it Sea of Thieves. Let's keep it uh very much rooted in Sea of Thieves lore and not bring in flying pixies and and flying children, right? But let me know where you would like to see the game go. Uh and guys, again, I want to apologize for not having an episode last week. I will try my hardest to not allow that to happen again. Uh I know some of the Sea of Thieves news is a little slow right now and quite frankly some of their events or their only event going on is rather lame. But we have season 4 on the horizon. Uh we need to look back on season 3 and see how we felt that was, which I honestly can say I thought season 3 was the best season they've done. I still think it's a little fast, but we'll get into that on a uh later episode. We obviously have some more lore talk. I've always promised lore talk. Uh, but I've never quite found the time to slide it in with all the news and things like that. So uh, I will try my hardest uh, to not miss a uh, another episode um, for your guys' entertainment. Guys, if you would like to support this broadcast, obviously going over to my YouTube, subscribing and watching my daily videos there. If you would like to financially support the broadcast, I strongly suggest um, checking out the charity link below. It doesn't directly support me but it, su- it supports a cause that's near and dear to my heart, helping children pay for their health care. But if you would like to financially support this broadcast directly, you can go over to patreon.com slash TV. And there's also donation links under the description where that money will go directly to me 
and the podcast. Um, but please give the money to charity first. I love this charity and they do amazing work. And I can't wait um, now that things are opening back up to get out there and see those kids that all your hard earned money is going to help. It's absolutely amazing to see the smiles on their faces and let them go explore conventions and things with me. It's absolutely fun. So check those links out in the show notes below. Guys, take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you next week on Pirate Talk Radio.